My name's Rick McLaughlin. Joining me in the booth is Bart Brentjens. Bart, Good this morning. one could be fireworks, couldn't it? Yeah, the man under 23, so fast on a course like this, fighting for a win. A lovely day to go bike racing in Switzerland. It has just got somewhat overcast all of a sudden. And if you follow international bike racing, one of the, the clear signs that we may be in for a spot of rain is whenever cameramen start putting the covers on the cameras. That's going on as we speak. Here is Malakorn. As the riders take to the start line, Luca Martin, their Bea factory team. The French national champion. Can he be a factor today? Andreas Emmanuel Vittoni for Italy. Luke Wiedemann, Thomas Maxon, one of the upcoming stars. under 23 men's cross country race. And this man though, the danger man today. Oliver Solvoy. Fans gathering here in Lenzerheide, having a good time. As well they might. Carter Woods, expected more of him last time out, 11th. Novo Mesto Namorave. Can he be right at the front of this one today? Well, some people less excited than others. <laughs> and we are. <laughs> Our commentary is obviously doing well today then, Bart. Here he is in the winner of the short track for the Czech Republic. And second last Thursday. Adrian Boisci. Dario Lillo heads out to the line in that distinctive blue and yellow kit. A young Swiss rider. Plenty of supporters here for him today. 132 riders. Yeah, a big, big field today. That's a big field. So one start lap plus five. Six laps. Tom Schellekes from the Netherlands, who finished yep. third in Nova Mesto Namorave. Uh, look at Tobias Lillelund from Denmark, strong rider too. Bjorn Rayleigh, Rayleigh Amos. Luke Moyer from South Africa. And Gustav Heavy Pedersen. Yep. Uh, Under some pressure in the it, family uh, bragging rights. His sister won. After that performance earlier on from his sister. But they're getting ready to go here in Switzerland. One minute's time before the off. Look at that field, Bart, stack. Yeah, 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 close together. This starts, so they will head out onto a start loop, first of all. 4.4 kilometers long, this course. 4.4 kilometers of absolute savagery. A tough, tough race course here in Lenzerheide. As always, altitude will play a factor too. 1,500 meters elevation where we are. 30 seconds to go then. In the bike kingdom, Lenzerheide. So the lights have gone red and we will wait for them to go green. Once they go green, as they do now, we are racing at the UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country Olympic under 23 men's race. And it's the Frenchman, Martin, who leads him up the top of the first climb into the start loop. And there's a crash deep in the pack. Well, yeah, that's almost predictable. What happened very quickly. Never oh, good if you're you bike. see the cranks, the cranks over have there. come off. Something. The Whoa. frame's given out. The bottom brackets come off the frame. Wow, wow. They have a lot of power, I've but never, so much. I've never <laughs> seen that bar. I mean, I've joked about it, but I've never actually done it. Better not to show the brands. No, vision. no. <laughs> there's a few marketing departments closing their eyes ahead of that one. But Martin is at the top of this one, and it's Lilo who's with him. Yeah, look at Martin from France, the national champion. 
So they will head out onto the start loop. The purpose of the start loop is to just try and thin out the pack as big as it is. Yeah, like three riders next to each other. That's uh, how wide this road is. So it's difficult for the riders as well to overtake each other on even if it's a long climb like this. Yeah, four or five of them at the front. Carter Woods in the national champions jersey off Canada there on the number nine giant. Right in the middle of your shot. And see how many riders there are. It's a serious, serious field here. 29 different nations in this group. So the start lap is a bit different from the, the original lap. Now they go up till the bridge. That's the highest point of this lap. And then into the descent. Two different lines over there. A little bit further. Two options, left and right. And if they had chosen their line, they can't get back to the different line anymore. Here they are. So two options, line choices. You can see the right-hand side there. That's the A line. You see here the bottleneck. Oh, look at them shooting down these. So the B line to the right-hand side of your screen. It's a bit more circuitous, a bit more long-winded, but avoids that tricky right-left drop. Yeah, and it has a lot of narrow sections, uh, this course, where it's difficult for the riders to overtake each other. They have to stay in one line. Now they head back up through this sort of meadowy section. But a good start for Dario Lillo, who won the short track last Thursday. Yeah, Swiss race, rider. Racing at home in Switzerland. Races don't get much bigger for him. He's from the Davo area. It's actually the town, not that far from here. Home soul race for him. He did Tour de Romandy on the road. And now leading the race. Down over this drop then. The course designed by Swiss cross-country legend Ralph Neff. The man himself, Luke Wiedemann, his team manager. I'm sure Ralph has been giving him some advice this morning over breakfast. I think so, yeah. He's been riding with these riders on the course the last couple of days. You were quick to point out on an e-bike earlier. Whereas you yourself are out there without the help of battery assistance. That's important, Bart. Any bragging rights in the pits, essential. You see Solvoy just sitting up that distinctive style, the big Dean. Yeah, but he, he had a crash last uh, Thursday in, uh, before the short track start, actually. He had to went to the hospital for some stitches. I don't know where it uh, was or necessary, but at least it wasn't uh, a perfect day for him. He had to go to the hospital, but uh, still a good race in uh, the short track. But at least all these little things that cost a lot of energy for, for their body. But still, when it comes to the men's under 23 race, and it would take a lot to, to dampen, the, dampen the enthusiasm and the energy of these young men. And there's still a little bit Here of time. Here is the crash again. Oh, it's just a That's right pile-up, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because you of can that. see the, where the crank should be. Ooh, yep. Oh, dear. Never seen something like that. Never, Never. seen a bike let nope. go there before. No. Nope. Yeah, that is just a bike. I mean, there's, there's no getting around to the tech zone nope. of that, you, is there? You can change everything on your bike except the frame. And uh, in the case like that... <laughs> frame's gone, that's it. Yeah. Stick what's left of it in the van, get on the road before the traffic hits. Pitoni then, the Italian in second place, ahead of Martin. Yeah, Andreas Pitoni, actually, he's in a great shape. He had a good race in... Uh, in Latouille, in Italy, a couple of weeks ago. Latouille, an absolutely fantastic place to go mountain biking. Some incredible enduro yeah, the, trails the there. The course is one of the best courses I've ever seen. One of the most terrifying days I've had on a bike came in Latouille amidst the, the Enduro World Cup trails there. So steep and just relentless. They just keep on going. You, you get through a really steep bit, you think, oh, that must be nearly it. No, you're not even halfway yet. <laughs> But they build a good, uh, build cross, a good cross-country track there as well. Yeah, they do a lot of uh, investments to build uh, a nice bike area, a lot of trails. Yep. Also for cross-country. Out front of this one it is the Swiss rider Lilo, the winner of the short track. With Andreas Fitone behind him, KTM Protec. 
Won that short track race by seven seconds as well, so wasn't hanging around from Adrian Bashi. Bashi, excuse me. Carter yeah. Woods, the Canadian, was third. But Dario Lillo, he did uh, Tour de Romandie with the Road Tour team. They're off and, and uh, running. It helps him a lot for a better performance right now these days. Here you can see part of the issue is when you do have as packed a field as this, one mistake from one rider can have the ripple effect that causes everyone else to be off and running. Yeah, yeah. If you have to put a foot on the ground, everyone behind you have to do the same. So that's why the start is so important for these riders. But for Dario Lilo, it looks good right now. Aurelie Amos on the seventh place from the USA. There's that awkward rock that we mentioned in the under 23 women's race. It's, uh, it's kind of a big boulder that actually getting onto it is the more difficult part of it. Getting down off it's fine. Gravity will do that for you, but very, very jagged edges. A lot of sort of chances to just tear a tire or pop some air out of a wheel. But no a problem group, for yeah. these top men. A group of eight. Closely together. Carter Wood is in that too. From Canada, Luca Martin, Adrian Brachy. Carter Wood, someone that our, uh, our colleague Josh Carlson reckons we haven't seen the best of yet. He reckons there's plenty more to come this season from Carter Woods. And also the Czech rider, Zat Lukal. Jan Zat Lukal. Jumps the whole bridge there, the Italian. <laughs> you love to see it. You great, love great to, to see, see it. that. And Twingy Tech feeds. Actually, it, it's not obligated to take something. So you can also take it without any assistant or feeding. But Andreas Fitone, he took a bottle. Now leading. He deserves the lead after jumping that whole bridge. I was really impressed with that. Let's see if he does it the next lap. He might have just arrived into it too fast and Let's not had it. any options. It's not that wide, actually, that bridge. You, no, you it's not. Easily hit the side. Yeah, that, that definitely, uh, I definitely sort of checked the angles on that one, but he's obviously ridden it in practice and felt it was a goer. Tom Skellikens on the ninth place. The guy who was in the white jersey, which you could see over the jump section. He finished third last week. Good start for him today. Matthias Wilson from the U from uh, New Zealand, left place. And here we see again Dario Lillo, the transit lane, and then Andreas Fitone, the Italian rider. I want to see him jump that bridge. Different lines for these riders, but together again. It is an awkward course here in Lenzerheide. As I mentioned earlier on, uh, Kent de Gallagher from Cannondale Factory Racing, te technical coach, uh, explained to me that when you're at race pace and you're up on top of all these routes, it rides well. But once the altitude <laughs> and the energy starts to leave you, then you start to get hung up on the routes and it just becomes relentless and it's really, really awkward. Once you lose that speed, it's hard to get it back. Really, Amos. Now we have Jan, Jan Zadlukau. That's a group of eight leading in this race with the drone behind them. Great to see the live drone shots in for these woods. It really gives you a sense of the speed they're traveling at and that's how rooty it is, as, as does this shot actually. Over that big rock, these riders yep. are taking the best lane in this corner. Riley Amos, we saw him for Trek Factory Racing, really have a good dig at it in the Czech Republic, and it just, it was actually mechanical, wasn't it? He lost a tire. Um, yeah, yeah, it was like that. And he sort of thought that he had a lot more to give in that race. Maybe today we'll see him fulfill his full potential. Adrian Bragi in this group too. Apparently though, Riley Amos, he does have form for that. He does just go hard, and if the bike can't keep up. That's Jan Zadlutska. Salukal. Pushing hard. The Czech champion in the 23. So here is confirmation entry top 10. The tone from Lilo, Martin, Woods, Boishy, Johnson, Amos, Salukal, Shelikens, Vidman. A lot of nations represented there. Nearly 800 individual riders listed for this UCI World Cup, a new record across all the formats. So mountain bike racing, healthier than ever as they come down to take 
the line. Yeah, and they're slowing down a little bit after their fast start. If they cross the finish line, five full laps to go. Different lap, the next one, the original lap. The start finish straight, just about the only place to take on a drink and actually uh, have some time to do so. Next to each other, no one likes to do the work. Five laps to go as they turn up the lap proper, this climb. Oh, yeah, yeah. Different lines. <laughs> Different lines nearly leading to disaster there. Was she nearly getting caught up in that one? Luke Wittmann with Tom Skellikens here, the numbers one and two in the chasing group. And it goes fast. Solvoy back in 11th at the minute. Further back than he might like. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, every little detail uh, after that crash he had last Thursday, went to the hospital, some stitches. It costs a lot of energy for the body too, to recover of that. And, and it's just uncomfortable, isn't it? And it's just, it adds up as well. You don't sleep properly. It just nags at you. It's getting changes awkward. It's Yeah, yeah and everything has to ideal. be perfect. But it's still very early in the race. There's still some time. But the leading group is going fast. And Andreas Vitone, the Italian rider for the KTM Protec team, is showing his strength. Dario Lilo next to him. Luca Martel also looking strong. There'll be a factory team rider, the national champ from France. And Braden Johnson in this group too. Number 39 on his bike. It's Luca Martin who's leading here. Yeah, Martin looking good for this one. Yeah. But as I say, but under 23 men's cross country racing. But he was also very strong in the short track last he was. Thursday, especially in the beginning of the race. But now there's a small gap. Yeah, under 23 men's cross country racing. Let's just put this politely. Not the most predictable of mountain bike racing formats. These guys give absolutely everything. They roll the dice. They do. And if it works out, it works out. And if it doesn't... They're stretching out the fields. Well, put it this way. We saw a bike blown in half before it even got across the start line, so... Rayleigh Amos Rayleigh here. Amos. Yep. Suffering. Looks to be. Luke Whitman is passing him over there in the red kit. Will the Ragdahl from Norway in the green. Kids, Carlton Woods, national champ from Canada. Third place, Carter Woods. Not unlike Oliver Solvoy as well, a big, big guy. Yeah, he is. And Bryden Johnson behind him. Sixth place for Bryden Johnson. These are the numbers one and two. What sort of rider does this course favor, Bart? That's, that's actually a good, a good question. I mean, the climb is quite long. You need to be a strong climber. But after that, the course, it's more flat. It goes up and down. Uh, yeah, you, you, have, you need to have a lot of power. Is it you just about the engine? The engine, yeah. You have to pedaling uh, and pedaling quite hard with a lot of pressure all the time. Because the course is so bumpy, a lot of roots. Oh. It, it's also a technical course, uh, especially with such a high speed. The top two really attacking that A-line descent. As you can see, not much grip up there. Braden Johnson, the rider with the, the US kit, national team kit of the USA. Yeah, so if you're new to cross-country Olympic mountain bike racing, courses like where we go, for example, next weekend in Liagang in Austria is all about climbing. Lots and lots of tough technical ascents. Other courses like Nova Meso Namorave, where we were for round one, really a bit more about the technical descent and then the ability to make those time, the time back amidst the rocks and roots of descents. But this track here in Lenzerheide, one big power sapping climb to start with and then really just kind of awkward throughout. There's lots of stuff on the ground, lots of roots that can just sap the energy. And we're at altitude, of course, 1,500 meters far. That can make a big difference today. Yeah, well. and also, yeah, if riders blew up uh, and uh, it's easily done in the beginning of the race, uh, they have to pay for it to recover from an altitude like this. It's very difficult. Um, they will pay the price for that if it happened. Yeah, high intensity racing, but part of the race craft of cross country racing is, as Bart says, being able to recover. And whenever there's not much oxygen about, that ain't easy. 
Lilo leads from Martin. Yep. They do, the numbers one and two. Switzerland versus France, national champions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Both very strong nations in cycling and mountain biking. Yeah, France always so dominant in everything cycling, but Switzerland, they've owned cross-country Olympic uh, racing for some time now. It's been a national, national badge of honor and Getting on the Swiss Olympic team almost more difficult than winning the actual Olympics. It's now Adrian Brasi who is closing the gap. Andreas Fittone behind him, Carter Woods, riding Johnson on the fifth place, that is. Sixth place, that is. Widening here in these oh. turns. Martin, great to watch through that. Yeah, great Anderson. to watch this. And after this, if they're entering the forest, that's that off-camera route section. Very hard to ride. Look, it's dry. And no problems for these riders, but they have been practicing a lot here. This section, you reckon, Bart, is one of the most niggly, just par-sapping bits? It is. It's uh, absolutely not an easy part. But in the, in, when it's dry, it's okay, but in the wet, it's terrible to ride. Terrible. Almost, almost you, you, impossible. Almost impossible, yeah. <laughs> we saw everybody off and running on it on the first lap. Look at Martin uh, now leading. Dario Lilo, Edwin Bragi. Bragi has brought them back to them. Yeah. Johnson right. for the USA hanging in there in sixth. Yeah, good, good ride for uh, Bryden Johnson. Yeah, strong, strong start. But as we say with the altitude, it can all of a sudden hit you, can't you? It can catch up with yeah, you. Yeah, but maybe he has done a, a good preparation. Altitude training. Luke Wittmann. Another Swiss rider on the seventh place. Solvoy in 14th. Yeah, a little bit further down, 20 seconds off. Kudima, Bart's, uh, Bart's rider from the Ukraine in 17th for KMC MTB Racing Team. Also, he had uh, a crash last Thursday on that uh, bridge. There was a little bit of rain coming in during the short track and uh, the wooden bridge became so slippery. He was not the only one uh, with that crash, also really Amos, he was involved uh, with a crash. And also uh, Luca Marte actually, he, he had a crash uh, too. A couple of riders, they went down and quit the race. Yeah, it is part and parcel of being a professional mountain bike racer, is being able to take the rough with the smooth. It doesn't always go according to plan. Different options over here for the riders to choose. And also an opportunity to overtake each other. These guys looking strong. They are looking strong, Bart. Group, group of six. Bryden Johnson, last of this group. Now we talked about this at the last round. It's obviously the big topic of discussion. Two riders, second and third at the minute, in the fingerless gloves. The mitts, they're coming back into fashion, aren't they? I don't know, actually, yeah. Martin out it's front with a full-fingered glove. Yeah, and then it's like the, the other style, it's more like road. Yeah, yeah, well, they've, they've uh, they come back into fashion, the mitts. I'm not sure if I'm there yet on them. I'd go full glove or no glove, I think. I like the full glove. Yeah, you've got to now, haven't you? It's just full finger gloves. They're so light now as well. Uh, yeah. As they, made. Not that they, they used to be like goalkeeper's gloves back in the day, but they're so light. Speed is high. It is, isn't it? I just Keep wonder. Keep on going. Yeah, very much a, f a feature of under 23 men's cross country races the high tempo at the start. Yeah. Nobody wants to blink first. Just off the side of that drop. Yeah, that, then there's a better angle actually for the next corner. Yep. And it's more straight coming Martin. into the next corner. Jump in the bridge as well. Lilo into the tech feed zone now to get a bottle. Smooth changeover. Luca Marte with the number seven on his bike, pushing hard here. Riding for the Orbea factory team. New team this year. Super pro setup though, Bart. The bikes look great, kit looks great. It looks good, yeah. Riding Johnson, the last rider from the US. Number 39 on his back. Oh. Yeah. That is what happens. And that's an insert, that that pink tire, right you see, that's the insert of the, but still, I don't know. Yeah, they don't always work. No, 
Not the right grade. See the tire insert there. It's a high density foam inner inner tire, I guess, if you'd like to call it. That um, is designed to help absorb some of the impacts and to keep them off the the rims of the bikes, but. They're complicated to put in, and once they decide to jump out of the tires, that's pretty much it. You're not fixing it at the side. Yeah, most of the time, it, they will stay in, actually. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, but, I mean, sometimes the pressure on these wheels, on these tires, it's so high. And a lot, especially these off-camber sections. And just as in downhill as well, we talked about it a lot yesterday, is that it can be hard to replicate race pace. You can get a bike set up nicely for, you know, <laughs> yeah. for practice laps, but... Whenever the clock starts, whenever there's people around you, that pace can be we've higher. We've seen already two weird things today. At the start, that broken uh, bottom bracket. Yeah, and, <laughs> and we, now, saw drop, and we saw drop chain as well in the under-23 women's race, yeah. which is quite but, a rare occurrence these days. But only itself. these things we have seen, uh, and here we see uh, God love me, still on the next wear rider running. Yeah. Try to find the tech feed zone, two uh, tech zones on this course. So, um, yeah, maximum two kilometers away out of each other. And it's Paul Shell for Lexware. Yeah, not the German. Sure. And also, he had a crash on last uh, Thursday. Short track, so unlucky here in Lenzerheide. Yeah, he'd be looking forward to leaving, uh, leaving Lenzerheide, I'd say, and focusing on next weekend in Liga Gang. Luca Martin. Dario Lillo from Switzerland. He's living in Dafo. That's close by. Not a bad place to live either. Also a 1,500 meters elevation, that town. So he's used to ride in these conditions with the lack of oxygen. Where we go to Leo Gang next weekend, Bar, is what sort of altitude is it at compared to? 800 it is. It's, it's like, so. uh, yeah, like a typical Austrian uh, valley, I would say. Mountains around it uh, over 2,000, but the valley, it's uh, 800 meters high. So not the factor that it is here? No, no. I might be able to move around a bit easier, that's good. Ah, nice. Paul still running. Still running. So. The oh, reason why shell. the reason why he is running is that you can only get technical assistance in the tech feed zone. Which, if he'd done that on his way into the tech feed zone, wouldn't have lost him much time. But out on the course, you've only got one option, and that is to get all the way around again to get to that tech feed zone. As we just see the riders come on the start finish straight. Yeah, and they use this part of the course to have a drink, to take a gel, some food, some energy to them which they need to have for the rest of the race. Yeah, interesting. Six riders leading this race. Yeah, Martin leads them up the climb on that number seven, Orbea. Andreas Fitone from Italy, the KTM rider. Strong rides. I tell you what, Bar, Adrian Boishy is growing in stature and leaps and bounds in front of us. He won the short track in the Czech Republic and Nova Mesa Namorave and couldn't believe it. He didn't know how he'd done it. Now, out the front consistently in the under 23, in the under 23 men's cross country Olympic. But also the last Thursday, second he finished, Adrian Boishy, very strong when it came down uh, to the last few laps. So his sprint is yeah, phenomenal. Andreas Fitone now coming to the front, next to Luca Martin. Uh, yeah, next to him. The Colombian rider Dana Franco has just gone past the commentary booth on a bike I've not seen before. Kind of almost looked like an old mountain cycle. So uh, it obviously wasn't an old mountain cycle, San Andreas. But keen to see that one when he comes past again. Riding closely together, these six. Paul Shell still oh. running. Oh, we see him all the time. And there he is at the tech oh, zone. He, another oh. rider. Another German rider in. But another problem. <laughs> Looks like the saddle went off or loose saddle. I wonder if this is just a bit of a precursor to what we're going to see in the elite races later on this afternoon, Bart, in that we are seeing a couple of little technical uh, difficulties creep in. Now, what are they going to do? Be new wheel into the back of this, but getting everything untangled. You can see the axle coming out. No quick release levers on these race bikes, of course. It is all yep. about solid axles. Yeah. 
Yeah, Allen key six they need to have yeah. to uh, remove the true axle. So as I say, big beefy solid through axles in these and race bikes. Paul plates. Shell, he's back on his bike, luckily. And he can start his race, he can continue his race. But you've got to have the bad days as well as the good days. That's where you do your learning. And the race goes fast. Andreas Fitone now leading. Dario Lillo, Luca Marte, Adrian Braschi. The chase group, 21 seconds back, led by Luke Wiedemann, Bjorn Riley. Yeah, the gap is there, these 21 seconds. It's not easy to close that. Luke Wittmann, he's he was missing the start a little bit. Such a massive field. 77 riders, 78 riders past our commentary booth at the start finish line now. This field's still ticking by as the leaders are well out onto their lap. Tom Skellig is ninth and Ulla Rekdal from Norway now on the 10th place. This section here, Bart, speaking as a, an average mountain biker, looks a like great fun to ride. But with your heart rate through the roof, I guess, slightly It's less, more so difficult. It's more difficult, <laughs> yes, certainly. Yeah, and these heart rates are pushing the through the roof. Yeah, 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 yeah. Strong guy, that car, oh, it's from Canada. Yeah, big powerful unit, isn't he? He is. Like Sam Gaze. Like, huh? no, I was just about to say, <laughs> not unlike Sam Gaze, who we will see coming up later on today in the elite men's race. Is this a track that then it suits that bigger, powerful rider? Yes, you have to be a very powerful rider on this course, but also because of that high altitude, yeah, you, 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 you need to have your oxygen. And actually, I think the more muscles you have, the more muscles you have to feed with your oxygen. So yeah, that's, that might be a, a problem. And that's that big well. climb over here. There's no replacement for displacement, as they say. Whenever I ran this little morning, I thought there was actually a line off that log and sort of gapping down the back of it, but I can see that that may be a bridge too far whenever your heart rate's about 108, 189, 190 beats per minute. Carter Woods, you saw he put his dropper seat pose down just for a better position when it came down to the drop. Yeah. And immediately up again to pedal and having the saddle in the right on the right height. And you can see how they carry the speed off that drop, up that next little incline and around the left-hander. Vitone still leads them from Lilo, Martin, Boishy, Johnson, Woods, Riley, Wiedemann, Schellikens and Trudler. So 34 seconds cover the top 10, it's all to play for still. Martin just having to get out of the saddle and do a bit more work to keep Lilo within touching distance. I'm impressed with the Italian out front here though, Bart. Yeah, but he's a strong rider, what I already said. Uh, he showed his strength in uh, Latouille. It was uh, last uh, weekend, actually, on Saturday. So uh, he, he must be in a good shape. Italian champion in the 23. I was actually, I was in Latouille at, um, at Enduro the same weekend that Italy won the... Uh, won uh, the Football World Cup and I've never seen scenes like it. It was guys diving through windows, smoke bombs going off. It was quite a thing to behold. It was uh, an exciting time. But yeah, great place to go mountain biking if you ever get the chance to go to La Twin. And probably Carter Woods, yeah, Canada of course, has terrain like this yeah. everywhere. These roots. He's used to ride in these conditions. I'm not sure where he's living, but might be. Actually, Andreas Pitoni, of course, he's not Italian champion. Yeah, otherwise, he would be wearing that jersey. The KTM ProTech rider. Yeah, Carter Woods. He's an East Coaster. He's from Quebec. Cumberland, British Columbia, Quebec. So he splits his time. British Columbia just about one of the best places you can go mountain biking on the planet Earth. Whistler, that's uh, these parts. Solve, Oliver Solve, we, we saw him with the number one on his bike. 11th right now, 37 seconds off. What can he do? Can he keep his jersey? Alexander Hudimaya into that corner. The green jersey. 
Back to the leaders, Andreas. Andreas Fitone leading. On the KTM bike. The full suspension bike for him. Yep, KTM yeah. obviously a massive mark when it comes to off-road motorcycles, but also in cyc cyclists too. In cycling, they've uh, they've been at it for some time. They're actually two separate companies. They are, yeah. Strangely yeah. enough, but placed in the same village. In the same village, yeah. And separate companies. Do you know why I know that? <laughs> the first ever press trip I was ever sent on as a mountain bike journalist was to the KTM factory. Yeah, they make some nice bikes. But using the same name, and everybody knows that It's a big name. brand recognition, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 it is. Over the big rock. And this is the Jason group But Luke Whitman. Alex Malakane behind him, and then we have Oliver Solvoy. With the number one on his bike. Finn Trutler. Ulle Rektal. Chase group then, led by Wiedman. Well, a little bit of a mistake of one of the riders. Some big rocks in that inside corner. Lap three out of six here in Lenzo Heide Bike Kingdom. Let's see what Andreas Vitoni will do on the bridge. Yeah. He has been jumping it before. Well, just sort of, yeah, just sort of half jumps and half manuals it. Manuals, yeah. Through the tech feed zone now, they all more or less apart from Boashi come. Yeah. The Hydration is so important. It altitude. is. Yeah, especially here on altitude. But also the hydration has some energy in it too for these riders. Also necessary to take to them. You see it most of the time at the just before the finish line, where they take uh, most of the time a drink and also a gel. And that, that group is working well together. Braden Johnson's hanging in there as well, Bar. Yeah, Braden Johnson, really nice ride for, of him today so far. Right in the US, uh, the, the jersey of USA Cycling. And this is that big rock where we have yeah. been talking about. So easy to come a cropper on this. Just, it's actually the other side of it that getting up on the lap bit is where I think the actual danger is. I identified it all, and that's where I would have the crash. Um, yeah, USA Cycling, of course, relocated to Bentonville to help develop that mountain bike program even further. Bentonville just. Uh, Disneyland for trail riding by the sound of it. I've not been out there myself yet, but by all accounts, a town. Spending a lot of uh, money into a this lot sport. Of money, huh? yeah. a building, lot of money. building trails everywhere. Literally everywhere. I think the whole yeah. town's basically built around a trail, isn't it? It's they had the uh, World Championship Cyclocross uh, two years ago. Yep, certainly somewhere that seems to be only somewhere we're only going to talk more and more about, I think. USA Cycling being based there as well. I expect to have a World Cup uh, cross country over there in a few years' time too. It would, it would not surprise me in the slightest. This group of six still riding very closely together. Different lines. Seems like, yeah, they're just sort of sizing each other up now a little bit, Bart, sitting in a bit. They've got three of that pack behind them. Luca Martin now on fifth place. Carter Woods here, the Canadian champ, sixth, the last rider of that group. But it is the Italian out front doing the work. Yeah, he does a lot of work today. And Dario Lilo, most of the time, very well placed. How Second you, place. How do you rate Dario Lillo then in terms of talent? He certainly seems to be a young man making a big name for himself. Yeah, he does. Uh, he's well, what we already said. He's living uh, in Davos, so on the same elevation as uh, Lanzerheide is. That will uh, help him already. He did uh, Tour de Romandie on the road with the uh, road tour team. Yeah, we are seeing more and more top road riders coming from a, a mountain bike background just because the I yeah. guess the, the bike handling's there. If you can handle a bike down the side of a mountain... It helps you it so helps. much. Yeah, yeah. And I think mountain, a mountain bike rider has everything in it. 
You must have, you must be a good climber. You must have to you need to have the, the, the bike skills. Positioning in a big group. Well, you, you only have to look at I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the name now, Tom Pidcock. What he can do on a road bike comes from that confidence on a yeah. mountain bike to a large degree. Oh Mathieu van der Poel in Mathieu Paris van der Poel. Well that yeah. segues me on perfectly, Bart, to the news. Mathieu van der Poel going to race UCI World Championship yep. in Glentress yep. in Scotland later in the year. The bullet went through the church. The bullet went through the church as you text me. I had no idea what you were talking about, but I really I like the saying. <laughs> <laughs> can only translate it like that. <laughs> the kogel then, the, the kogel is not a kerk. If I translate it directly, the, the bullet the ran through the, through the church, so the decision is made. I asked Bart what that meant, and he told me the, the decision is made. I said, you start firing guns at a church, that definitely sounds like the decision is made, but huge news for cycling fans that uh, we're yeah, going to yeah, see Van der Poel on yeah, a mountain yeah, bike yeah. again. And probably also uh, Andorra Leger are, are in his mind to do uh, as well. But uh, yeah, of course, the Olympic Games next year in Paris, uh, that's definitely something what he likes to win. But for the, b before that, he has to qualify, he has to do some races, uh, acting on the highest level. And uh, yeah, it's nice to see him participating in uh, world championships. And for him, it will be more, it will be a difficult one. It's tough. Yeah, he has to start from uh, in the far back end. A superstar, of course, on the road, but he loves mountain bike racing matches. He loves to ride uh, his mountain bike, yeah. That's Here we go then, you get to see some of the shots of the effort involved. And the terrain, the roots, how hard this course is. Yeah, just a little weather update for you. Dark clouds still hanging just to the west of the circuit here in Lenzerheide. Wonder if they will make their way across for the elite races. Yeah, not that much sunshine actually. Like this morning we had uh, even more. Yeah, we have more now sunshine this morning, but it is actually perfect for bike race at the minute, isn't it? Nice and cool, not too cool. With these six close together. Yeah, so they come up this. Testing each other. They this. have been testing each other. Now looks like they're slowing down a little bit. They really come up this long, soul sapping asphalt climb and in that hard right 180 degree corner, as you can see, back onto the dirt for this so uphill bermed section. So the fastest uh, lap time, 12.23. Looks like it'll be lovely to ride down that. Not so much fun to ride up it, but... Boishy. Very, very hard uh, to distance. Well, if, oh, that's uh, Gustav uh, Patterson, the number 41 on his bike. National champ from Denmark. That's Oliver Solve, the number one on his back. What I said, he had a small crash on Thursday, has some, got some stitches, and now around seventh place already, 23 yeah, seconds off. I wonder if that crash has maybe just stymied Solvoy slightly. But seventh but, place, Yeah, but I mean, bad. 23, it's, it's, it's also very consistent. Let's have a look to his uh, lap times, uh, yeah. Five, five seconds faster than uh, the leading group, actually. Okay, so Solvoy could be coming back yep. to join these guys quite soon. And it looks like now a group of four. Look at Marte and Carter Woods are struggling with the high speeds of these riders. Or did one of them make a little bit of a mistake in that descent that we haven't seen? Johnson's still there, isn't he? Clinging on the American. There he is, yep. coming into shot nine, the blue jersey. Bryden Johnson. Looking very strong. Look at Matek, Achterwood, here we are. Dario Lilo, Andreas Fitone. You can see how Adrian close their Brashy. hands, their hands get to that Brian log. Johnston. Their right hands just tip around that big log on the inside of that turn. Really, really well built track here in Bike Kingdom Lenzerheide. Yeah, look at Marte struggling with the high speed through this meadowy section now. A bit of a straight line now towards the drop. That's the second uh, tech zone where you see all the wheelbacks laying into the grass. So eight seconds now. Martin and Woods moving backwards by 31 seconds back to Malakarn Vidman. Ulrik Dahl here in the green jersey. Just watching the bikes coming past the window, the commentary booth, pretty much clean as well. Not much mud out there on the circuit. 
yeah. track holding up well here in Lenzer Hydax. You had some moisture earlier on in the week, and it seems to have just glued things together nicely. Yeah, spectators are enjoying. Yeah, dogs always enjoy everything. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the beauty of dogs, man. <laughs> Yeah, Dario Lilo is pushing hard, all right. Lilo no. and Vitone. Was she in close attendance? But if it comes down to a sprint finish, Adrian Brogy is one of the fastest. He's in third He's place right now. He's on hanging on. Him. He's a smart sprinter as well. It's yeah, not yeah, necessarily yeah. all about power. He knows when to go. Saving his energy right now, not doing too much work into this race. One of the youngest riders in this group here, second year in the 23. Off that rock, down through these nice, fast flowing turns. Chance to recover for the good bike handlers, which they all are. It's Carter Woods now, who is on fifth place. Overtook Luca Marte, who is struggling with the high speed. You can see just the difference in the line there. Just six inches to the left, and you're out on the braking bumps. And there's a lovely, almost blue groove forming right at the bottom of it, where you can just hook the bike into, enjoy some free speed. You see Carter Woods is coming back. Because Luca Marte, who's dropped back a little bit of this, he has a technical problem. I wonder. Yeah, it might be a soft rear tyre, but I saw that... Well, we did. He's suffering with this, uh, with the high speed. We saw Sam Gaze, of course, come a cropper in the short track, take out Nino Scherter on Friday evening where that front tyre just let go on a bit of gravel on the asphalt as they turned left up the climb. These cross-country race bikes, they run such low tyre pressures that there's loads and loads of grip until there isn't. Yeah. And then it's gone, <laughs> there is no getting it back. Yeah, I mean... Actually, the, uh, sometimes the tyres are even... Well, it's more slippery on the asphalt than it is in the gravel yeah. for these riders. To, they're not used to take the, the, the asphalt on such a high speed. They, they have a better feeling when it comes down on, on gravel or, or, or like uh, off-road. Yeah, they're sort of, uh, they're all at sea. Ola Rektal, KMC. Going well, Bart? Yeah, it's going well. Good ride, 12th place. Ola Rektal. What's his speciality there? What sort of course really suits him? A course like this, yeah. Powerful wider he is. Very strong in short track too. Through the Red Bull yeah, the roots and rules section. First row start he had in uh, Novemaster Namorava. But he was struggling a little bit last Thursday with the, the altitude, the elevation. So he blew up a little bit in the beginning okay. of the race and he had to pay for that. I think that's completely Now he's more used to it already since uh, the team has been here in the beginning of the week. How many days how many days do you need to be at altitude to be used to it? It, it depends a little bit which elevation you are. Okay. 1,500 is not super high, but uh, if you do altitude training at least uh, the first week, actually, you have to be very careful uh, with uh, the intensity training, what you are doing. I always notice myself the first couple of nights sleep is when it affects me. Yeah, I don't really also, yeah. sleep those first couple of nights. Not, not, not good at all, eh? That, that's how it is. No, not much altitude about uh, County Down in Northern Ireland where I'm from, but... Carter Woods came back to the leading group. Carter Woods has made his way across, yep. The Canadian champ. Riding Johnson in front of him. Still Johnson hangs in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having a great day. Andreas Fitone, the KTM rider, KTM Protec Electro System. Yeah, not, not just taking as much air across that bridge as he did on lap one. I think he maybe arrived <laughs> into that a bit faster than he anticipated. But they are, they're all taking gels, so they're is. all taking their bottles. You can see all the tech zone there to the right hand side, all the spare Dario wheels. Lilo. Lilo moves to the front. Yeah, taking the leads. And you see Whoa. Luca Marte. Johnson throws the back end out, why not? He's enjoying himself. These guys are pushing high. They really are, aren't they? Cracking on at the front. Yeah, 
Fastest lap of the race currently belong to Luca Martin at 12.22 on lap two. No surprise that it came right at the start. Yeah, he's slowing down just a little bit, but the lap times are almost similar every time again. Uh, I'd say we'll see that record go over the next couple of laps, Bart. Tends to be the way with cross-country racing, a high early pace to get yourself into some clear air, and then towards the end of the race, the business end of things, the time start to tumble again, don't they? League but the conditions are perfect. 13 seconds ahead of Martin, that current holder of the fastest lap record. Yeah, Luca Martin on sixth place, with 13 seconds off. There's nothing in between these uh, five riders. I think Carter Woods, he, had, uh, he was behind Luca Martin when uh, the speed went up and he had to wait for a good place to overtake Luca Martin, but now he's back in the lead with these other four. Haven't really seen him pose himself at the front of it, have we? It'll be interesting to see if now he starts to sort of ride and gets past Johnson and starts to sort of make his presence felt towards the front of it. Another man you would fancy to have a decent sprint on him should it come to it. Could be, yeah. But definitely we, it will uh, change in the next few laps. It goes fast, this race. And mostly we have seen uh, Andreas Pitone and Dario Lilo who's doing the work. These two. Luca Martin, of course, he did that as well in the first few laps, but he dropped back now a little bit. Yeah, you see here a little bit of a burn where they've tried to find a grip. Fast cornering. And that's that steepest part of the first big descent. The slippery part with a little bit of water still coming out of the mountain. Yeah, we think that's... Um must be sort of a localised little water source or something, or yeah. little spring or something, because it's the only really damp place on the track, but as luck would have it, it's at the steepest bit as well. <laughs> it is. Probably it's designed like Oh, no. Like oh, no. Do you know what? He's not let go of the bike. Whoa, you see, he's yeah. sliding down. I'm generous. I don't think it's a crash if you haven't let go of the bike. Carter Woods is a little bit off, but time to relax. Time to stretch his back, and that's what he's doing. Relax, everything's, no. everything's relative, yeah. yeah, but... They do it. Two laps. Every time again here on this part of the course. Two laps to go. Yeah, chance to sit up, stretch the back out for Carter Woods. The front ends on these cross-country race bikes now, so low as well. They sit in such an aggressive position on them. Yeah, I mean, they are, I wouldn't say aerodynamic, but they. you need to have your... Also, your weight a little bit on the front wheel for better traction. If if, if you if your weight is too much on the rear wheel, then there's no yeah. pressure on your front wheel, and, and the, the, the pressure on your front wheel gives you the the grip in the cornerings. Fascinating to see though the cross-country race bike geometry. That's the angles of the frame. They've got so much more aggressive over recent years. You know the the downhill race bikes. Front the front axles kicked out really far in front of the rider and. It's something that's trickling down because, as I say, Nino Scherter, Yolanda Neff, they've proven over the years that you can make seconds on descents, and that's important too, not yeah, just yeah, bikes. Yeah, yeah, and that's also why everyone is on a full suspension bike to go fast in the descent. 120 millimeters of suspension is more common than maybe 100 millimeters even these days. They're like a fast trail bike now, aren't they, as opposed to what we would have yeah, known as a cross-country yeah, race bike. Yeah. Also, he's on the nap. She's on a, a top fuel of track. Yeah, not, so the it's not the super caliber. Not super caliber, no, no, no. So the super caliber has less travel uh, compared to the top fuel. What do you think we'll see from Yolanda Neff later on today, Bart? Because she didn't really feature much in the short track. Was she keeping her powder dry, maybe ahead of the Olympic Yeah, race? but I mean, with Yolanda, you never know, huh? She you never know, yeah. <laughs> she I don't, think, be, she I don't think she knows. <laughs> no, that's, that's how it is, but she might be in for a good race. I, I mean, short track, it's not the same like cross country. There is that bike I mentioned earlier on, the Colombian rider on. Really interesting. Look. Alexander Rodima is coming uh, next to us in the commentating booth. On the red crash last Thursday. There's Martin. On the sixth place. Sixth place, not looking quite as bullish as he was at the start of this one. But he's coming back, looks yeah. like that. Yeah. Or oh, they're slowing down. What are the tactics at this stage in the race, Bart, with two to go? What do you want? Do you want to size up the people around you? Are you sort of taking stock of who's there? 
Yeah, I mean, I think the speed is high, so uh, that's, and no one likes to really uh, going too early into this race. Not like to blow up uh, yep. that early. And if, if the riders, they stay too long together, but, but the group is actually too big. Would you, would, you throw a, would you throw an attack in here at this stage to try and no, thin it out a not bit? No, not yet, not yet, no, no. It's, there's still plenty of time. Yeah, you have to use your, your, your strength, your weapons, what you still uh, have if it comes down to a sprint. Maybe Adrian Brochy, he's one of the fastest. Um, I can imagine also uh, Carter Wood, for Carter example, Woods, if it comes yeah. down to that more that last part of the course where there's a lot of roots, he can use that. Carter Woods has some firepower as well, so... And now it's Bryden Johnson who likes to be in the first place in, when it comes down to the descent. Yeah, why not? So let's have a look at him, Braden how Johnson. fast he is. In the form of his life here today. Yep. Sprinting. Do you know what, Bart, as well, if you're going to have a good race, do it at a UCI World Cup in front of all the big team managers. That's the place to do it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's where you have to do it. And also for these guys, yeah, the World Cup's the highest podium to perform. It is, it is the top, top drawer of international mountain bike racing. And Braden Johnson is having himself a time out there. Oh, Luca Martin. Just a bit clumsy into that right-hander, maybe just pushing that a little bit hard, trying to get back in contact. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the leading group is still efficient for him. It will motiva motivate him uh, a lot. Riding Johnson. Yep, they're all one by one, trying to keep them in sight. Five different nationalities leading this race. But look at Marte on the sixth place from France. Now we have Brazil. So the first seven in this race, seven different nationalities. Yeah, there's never been a better time for international mountain bike racing. It truly is international these days, isn't it? It's an incredible sport, Bart, given that it's mountain biking differs in every single country in the world of what yeah. people ride, what they enjoy riding, yeah. what their trails are like, and they come together at the UCI Mountain Bike World Series and they all race together all over the world and still the margins are so fine, they come down to fractions of a second. Yeah, this, that's how it is. And it's, it, it's already happened from the start. The start has to be perfect. Old uh, Dirt Magazine editor. Tom Skellikens from the Netherlands. And the number five on his back. And legend Mike Rose famously said once that mountain biking is like a cheese sandwich. Everyone's got a different idea of what goes into <laughs> it. But still, they all come together at the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup. The Johnson line leads from Lillo. Yeah, uh, Andreas Fitone is pushing hard again. Fitone Boishy, Carter Woods, Carter five seconds. Carter Woods a little bit off. Yeah, you can see him just in the shot there off that drop. You kind, you kind of feel that if Carter Woods wants to be involved in the conversation at the end of this one, he needs to start making his way forward slightly. Probably this part of the course will suit him better than the big climb. With the roots. Yeah. Adrian Brazzi is in front of him, but also he is struggling with the speed of Andreas Vitone from Italy. I wonder if Vitone is just starting to twist grip a wee bit here now. And also the riders getting exhausted, of course, when it comes down a little bit, an hour mark almost. Yeah, 54 minutes into this one of going yeah, as yeah. fast as possible. Now they will feel it in their legs. But Brian Johnson is still looking good to me. Is it hard to separate the brain, the brain from the legs and just ignore the pain? <laughs> <laughs> they try to ignore the pain, of course, but yeah, that's, it, it comes together. Definitely a mental game always, but it plays a big role in uh, racing. And it's tough as well because the brain, like everything else in the body, functions on oxygen. And whenever there's not much oxygen around... No, but also the brain, they need uh, oxygen to, to yeah. function well. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong, yeah. <laughs> but Tony Lilo, Judson and Boishy, Woods and Martin. 24 seconds, cover the top six, but it is from the top five. And Alex Malacana from Brazil, the number 20 on his back. Here Malacana, he is. Malacana, 42 seconds back. Wiedemann, somebody that we thought might be further forward in this one. 51 seconds back for Thomas Maxon. Yeah, Luke Wiedemann, I think he missed the start completely in the beginning. 
eighth place. He this, is now. This is shaping up perfectly. Yeah, Finn Trudler riding for the Brunex Superior Factory Racing Team. There is Heavy Patterson in 10th. Yeah. Brother what? of Sophie Heavy Patterson. More than a minute back. I think Sophie Heavy Patterson would probably race in the Leah Gang tonight if she had the option. She was in that good form. It's not that far away from here. Most of the teams they will travel tomorrow and build up their team area again in the next few days. Are you making the drive tomorrow? Tomorrow morning. With the, with the team, yeah? Yeah, and then try to build everything tomorrow night or tomorrow late afternoon that it's ready tomorrow night. I'll turn up once you get that coffee machine on. You're welcome. Once uh, the coffee Rick. machine turns on, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when she's warmed up. Maybe we can go for morning rides. Yeah, we've been threatening to do this, Bart and I, to go on a bike ride together. I think he's massively, massively overclubbing things of what he's expecting from himself, but we'll see. Josh Carlson, he uh, joined us one of the days, uh, um, last, yeah. a few days ago. Josh Carlson still getting over that bike ride. We'll talk more about that in the elite, uh, the elite races. I've got some bones to pick with you on that one, but 56 minutes in, and it's still anyone's race at the front of this. The Italian Vitone looks over the shoulder. Lilo looks over the shoulder. Still hard to pick a winner, Bart. It's really hard to say. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you see uh, sometimes a little bit of a gap in between the riders when the speed goes up. But immediately they're coming back together. So, uh, yeah, there's not that much in between these five. Over the bridge, who is going to go in the tech feed zone? And that makes it so interesting to watch these races. Great aerial shot here as they come in. Grab a bottle. Yeah. All, all of those bottles measured out to the milliliter. Yeah, it is, yeah. And yeah, you see as well, most of the riders, they throw it away immediately. They don't like to take it with them, but on that start-finish area, that's a good place to have another extra drink. Big, big jump. Brian Johnson throwing the whips out. I guess it's a bit of mental stimulation. You're enjoying yourself, why not? Yeah, why not? Tom Pidcock in Czech Republic, he was certainly yeah, enjoying yeah, himself, and he threw his whips yeah. out. Especially if the fans are there on the ne next to the course. Just getting the bike sideways in the air. I look back over the shoulder for... Uh, Dario Lilo, but everyone is still there. Brian Johnson, Carter Woods, Adrian Brachy. Especially this part of the course where they are right now, when it comes down to the last lap, the positions are really important. It has a lot of turns, this part. Overtaking is not that easy at all. And when it comes down to sprint, the long sprint, and the positions are really important. Yeah, you can see just the carpet of roots there. How much energy, how much energy, excuse me, it takes out of these athletes. It, it does, yeah. It's a very uh, annoying cause actually to ride on, uh, on these routes all the time. It, it absorbs so much energy from your body. But the bikes, of course, the full suspension bikes, uh, big volume tires, uh, the riders are using too. But as you say, it's all energy, isn't it? It's all energy moving things around, going yep. through the body, going through the bike. Yep. Relentless. I think that's maybe the best word for this Lenzer Heide course, relentless. It never gives up at you. It never gives you a break. <laughs> yeah, it just yeah, keeps it's, on it's, yeah. chipping that's away. It is. it is. 23 seconds off for Luca Marte. 37 for Alex Malakana from Brazil. But these five. Fastest lap now belonging to Dario Lilo. Lap number two, a 12.18. Yeah, he was pushing hard, you could see that. And then immediately, yeah, riders, they have to pay the price for that. Luca Marte, he dropped off. He was in the leading group for the first few laps. There we go, some people doing some good race prep. The barbecue's getting ready. They're getting in place for the elite level races. Yeah, a long day of racing. What do you think, Bart? Will that barbecue be anywhere near the booth when we get a burger uh, or two thrown they, in or something? They promised us to. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's the next, the next level up as we get a barbecue in here and just uh, some salads and some bars. <laughs> well, very well, enjoyable. Some smoke. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, yeah, the smoke mightn't be ideal right enough, but yeah, and then the Swiss fans lining the tracks here in Lenzer Haida during the elite level cross country Olympic races. One of the big, big days in the calendar. And they are now starting to assemble. And this is that new section on the highest point of the course.
One to go when they cross the line after this one. And then someone is going to have to make the decision as to who wants to win yeah. it. Now it's getting serious. Really serious. Really, really serious. Here we go. Final lap. And again, riders slowing down. They take their, their energy to, to them. This is cross-country racing at its best. When it comes down to a big yeah. group on the last lap. And now we'll mark now. Final lap. Here we go. Get ready for a slugfest. Five leaders. Adrian Brasil in fourth place. And there we have Carter Woods is right back with him in the Canadian jersey at the back of the pack. Fitton leads him up that little climb. Yeah, and here was Luca Marte. Look Still in vision. Still in the vision. The group for him. Just noticed a couple of times we've seen Martin just slightly untidy in a couple of places, and I wonder if that's just fatigue beginning to settle in. The Brazilian Malacarne crosses yeah. the line. Also for Alex Malacarne, he's coming back a little bit. 37 seconds it has been. He gained 12 seconds back. But that's probably because these slow down a little bit. Testing each other at the bottom of the last climb. Braden Johnson in that dark blue jersey off the US. He's still with them. Could today be his day? He's looked good for you. He's thrown the back end out over all the jumps, which uh, cements him amongst the bike racing fans. But, crucially... Andreas Fitone now leading out of the saddle. He's looking, looking, looking. Yeah, looking back over his shoulder. There's still some time. But you have to use your own strong weapons, what you have in mind. There comes Adrian Brogy to the front with the number three on his bike. Trinity team, he's riding. Specialized bike. Boisie, a stylish rider, really flamboyant, great sprint on him. I wonder know. if he's just going to move the front, maybe try and soften him up so he finds out who he has to beat in that sprint. The French guy, he became world champion as a junior last year, last year uh, junior, so this is his second year on the 23. And now leading the race. Bart, if this is you, what position do you want to be in on this last lap? Second, third would be still good. Yeah, you want to just be keeping an eye around you, but not necessarily dictating the no, pace, no, no, I guess. No, 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 not necessarily to the dictating the pace, but Adrian Brogy is pushing hard for the first time. This, You see here he's sprinting to the top. Uh, Riding Johnson has to pay the price for that, a small gap. Yeah, grit in the teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really flat on the bike, Johnson, back almost horizontal. But Andreas Fitone, no problems for him with the speed. Also Dario Lilo on third place. So the 25th rider has just crossed the line in front of us and he's two minutes 22 back. Gives you an idea of how hard this group at the front has pushed. Lilo on second place. The Carter, Woods rider. Now, Carter Woods is the, yep. the next in the drop zone. No, but I mean, he's still there. He's still there. And we expect him to be a bit stronger on the second part of the course the, the part behind this big climb johnson the shoulders rocking and rolling now a wee bit sucking air through the teeth but also still he's, he's still in touch with them he is yeah he's riding his way back onto them yep. martin not a million miles off either the frenchman 16 seconds but he's suffering yeah he's you can see his body weight to go forwards rolling around on the bike a wee bit adrian brigi how fast can he be in this technical part? Look how flat Johnson is on the bike, really. Horizontal. Washi, really nice rider to watch as well, Bart. Nice technical style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, all these five, they have a style like that. Okay. All these six. Braden Johnson from on the that, USA. On the Trek Super Calibre. Alex Malacana from Brazil. On the Luca Marte, right he must be in front of him still in sixth place. So Alex Malacana, he's in seventh place. There's Widman. Washi cracking on at the front now. Yeah, yeah. And you see here a small gap to Carter Woods. But this is still quite early in the last lap. To it's, push early. That hard. it's early in the last lap, but we're starting to see the finish line. Being prepared in front of our commentary booth because there is going to have to be a winner at the end of this one. 
Yeah, and probably Adrian Brachy, he likes to be in the first place, first position when it comes down to the more technical parts of this course, that off-camber wood section, which will come uh, very quickly right now. Brachy growing in stature with every turn of the cranks this year. A win in the cross-country Olympic. Just a ticket for him. Sprinting to the top of these little climbs all the time, these riders. Andreas Vitone tried to overtook Dario Lilo, but it didn't happen now. No, Washi drops this is an back. attack. Lilo. This is an attack of Lilo. They're still close together, these five. It will be a long sprint this last lap. Yeah, the whole last lap, pretty yeah. much a sprint. <laughs> it is. Probably the fastest lap time. This, what ha this is what happens whenever you ride together as a big group. Come the last lap, somebody has to turn the screw. No, Lillo's been brought back in again by Vitone. Andreas Vitone. Second place behind Dario Lillo. Then we have Adrian Brasi, Carter Woods, and Bryden Johnson. Vitone is really impressed in this race bar, hasn't he? The he Italian. does, he does, yeah. Actually, he's doing it from the beginning, yeah. Yeah, in the blue and white jersey. KTM rider. With the number 15 on his bike. Andreas Vitone now second place behind Dario Lillo. Six seconds in between these five. Uh, Dario Lillo is looking strong. Dario Lillo, the winner of the short track on Friday evening. Can he do the same? Fancy's doing the double. Just building and building this little gap. Yeah, Sophie Peterson, she did uh, also the double. Yep. Well, no, actually, uh, did, no, she didn't do the double. It was um, Sophie, she finished fourth. Sophie Peterson, she finished fourth. Yeah, yeah blocking on someone. Sorry for that. No, 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 no. It's all right, boy. We, we keep maybe. each other right in here. <laughs> maybe Dario Lilo, he can do it, maybe. But Tom, it's not Pitt, over Tom yet. Pitcock, of course, in the Czech Republic, did the double. Increasingly hard to do in cross country racing, but Lillo, two, two seconds, seconds. from Vitone. He's pushing hard now. He is, he is. And if they want to bring him back, they need to start doing it soon. It looks so much easier riding on these trails when you go fast. I'm sure very little of it feels easy at the minute for these top under 23 men riders. Carter Woods still there. But there's a little bit of a gap. Fred and Johnson against all odds is in fifth still. Two seconds between Dario Lilo and Andreas Vitonovic. The wind picking up here. Wow, clicked out of his pedal. Oh. Drop a seat pull, and that's not the best place to click out of your on pedal. The, on the Scott Spark bike, a race proven chassis by none other than Nino Scherter. Kate Courtney. Both riders in action later on this afternoon in the elite well, class. A little bit of a mistake of uh, oh. Andreas Pitone. That's why they try to overtake him. It looks like he has a problem. I don't know what. He, at least he slowed down too much. Yeah, I just saw one of them behind him forcing their way past. Yeah. Because they realize that this could spell danger. Now, Lilo could be riding his way to a win here. That looks much better for him right now. Lilo off the drop. The gap is getting bigger. Safely does it over this bridge. Yeah. And now he taps the power on. Lilo smells a win here. Look seven seconds pace. back now. There's seven seconds between him and Vitoni. Washi, Woods and Johnson. Roared on by the Swiss crowd. This would do just a trick to whet the appetite ahead of the elite races. Checks over the other side of the track. Wood seconds. Carter Woods in the second now. Yeah. Carter Woods has kept the powder dry and it's him, it's him in front of Boisci. Yeah. So, something must have been going wrong with uh, Andreas Vitone. We saw that, something but we didn't see it in detail. Something has happened to Vitone so yeah. far along the lines. Vitone on fifth place now. It, it, it just happened after that big rock. The riders had tried to overtook him over there, but uh, that didn't happen very quickly. So that's why the gap is a bit bigger for Dario Lilo at the moment. Yeah, 16 seconds back now for Tony. What a shame, the guy who did so much of the work early doors here. 
Carter Woods second place, but there's still a bit of time. Carter Woods, here we are, second place. Carter Woods, if he can get Lillo. Adrian Brashe, even he's not that far off. If he can get Lillo back within striking range. And then we have Bryden Johnson. Maybe. Struggling here at the B, with the pace. Let's just see, jump on board for this drone shot now. And this will give us an exact idea of how far away these two are at the front of this one. Carter Woods will fancy Rain and Lilo in for a good go at him in the sprint finish, but Lilo can't sprint. He's won the short track on Friday evening. It's not his first rodeo when it comes to that. Woods checks over the shoulder. There's nothing in between these two. Now he's out of the saddle. The big Canadian swinging at it. That's the difference. A few back lengths only. Is it enough? It's not that far anymore. It's really not. It comes down to a sprint. I think it might do, you know, yeah. unless... Unless it's a disaster somewhere along the line. Three seconds, yep. Switzerland against Canada. The national champions of Switzerland and Canada about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe here by the look of it. Bar to bar, pedal to pedal. Which one is going to have the reserves of horsepower left in the tank? Yeah, there's still a few bike lines in between, but... There's still an option, opportunity for Carter Woods. Do you think Lillo missed his opportunity to get clear, Bart? I don't know if that was the reason. Oh, they're going so fast, they're going flat out. They know as well, there's not that much time left anymore. No. Nope. Coming into the start finish arena. Yeah, the photographers and the filmers, they're all amassed just after start finish line now, getting ready for to receive these two into the stadium. Next to the deck of the, to the team area. Here they come, you can see the moto that clears yeah. the path for the front. There's a little bit of a gap, but almost nothing in between. Oh, and Carter it's an Woods. uphill sprint finish. It is slightly uphill to the line. It is a sprint finish, both yeah. of these men. But they are both very exhausted, yeah, very exhausted, exhausted. Carter, believe me. Carter Woods, has he boxed clever? He's been further back than Dario Lillo throughout. But the head's down. Has he got what it takes as they come into the finish area now? The national champion of Switzerland sees the national champion of Canada behind him. Can Carter Woods close the gap or is it going to be Dario Lillo? Dario Lillo looks over his shoulders. He's done enough. The Swissman wins at home in Switzerland at the second round of the UCI mountain bike cross country Olympic under 23 men's World Cup race. What a race by Dario Lillo. We wondered if Carter Woods could do enough, but Bart, he just dipped the head slightly before the bridge and it kind of spoke for it. It spoke volumes, didn't it? He didn't have enough when it came to the line. Oh, what a finish it was. Adrian Brasi on third place. Third place to Boisci, what could have been? Johnson rewarded a superb ride in fourth. Luca Martin crosses the line. Fifth, the Frenchman for Orbea. Celebrates with Boisci just in front of our booth here, but there is the winner, Lilo. Can't believe it. There yeah, well, what, is the emotion. What happened with, with uh, Vitona? Vitona has had a big issue out there yeah, somewhere because yeah, that's still, the Brazilian now. Now, yeah, that's Brazilian on sixth. Malacar. So uh, Vitona probably he had a flat tire or something like that. Uh, on the timing screen, we see him on the ninth place. Uh, ninth we haven't place seen him on the screen. finish line right now. That's Luke Wittmann coming in, Luke another Wittmann. Swiss rider. Yeah, grits the teeth. Seventh place for Luke Wittmann. Maybe not overly impressed with that one, but that man is Lilo. Yeah, you're Lilo. You are seeing two of the big stars of cross-country racing in the future there. Peterson, Gustav Peterson. Yep. Good ride. He'll be buying dinner tonight for the Pedersons. Sister, Sophie Heavy taking the win. The 23 women's earlier on today. Finn Tutler, another Swiss rider, strong finish for him, ninth place. And there was Andreas Fitone. Dario Lilo has We don't just know exactly what went wrong. Well, let's have a look at the it bike. Must, it must have been a technical problem. Let's have a look and see, what he, see what he looks like when he gets off the bike. Well, did he have a crash? No, no, I don't think so. No, no he's shaking his head. And oh. holds his hand, head That's in his hand. Shame. He was so strong. So strong he was. Mechanic staring down at the back wheel. I wonder if it was a free hub or something's gone, you know. Oh, it could be. Could be. Yeah, seems we turn him the gear. Almost and find in out. a winning position. Tom Schellekens, Ulrich oh. 11th place. Tom Schellekens 12th. 
out of the window of our commentary booth. Dario Lilo has just written himself down in the position for the post-race interview in tears. That's what it means to him. Dario Lilo, he took the win here in Landsreide. There was nothing in between the numbers one and two. Here is the second place. Carter, oh, Carter, Carter Woods. Woods looks like he's been in a boxing match, not a bike race. <laughs> You see it even the dusty outside on the course. It is dusty, isn't it? They're all Adrian covered in dust. Adrian with the number three on his bike, finish on the third place. But what a shame for Andreas Fitona from Italy. Good race from Boisci, that though. Yeah. Consistent. Very second last Thursday in short track, third cross country. Strong rides. Garson Beard crosses the line. 24 for the USA. Johan Van Zeel, South African, in 25th. Dario Lillo, though. What a display. What a place to do it. Your home round as well. A lot more pressure on the home round, Bart. Yeah, but he's in such a good shape. He uh, already showed it last Thursday. Uh, he has done uh, Tour de Romandie, I think. It made him stronger, the stage race on the, on the road. He was in the leading group for the whole race. Um, and he was pushing hard when it came down to the last lap, to the last kilometers of this race. But Carter Woods, he came very close. Two seconds at the end. Seconds. But as I say, there was just a dip at the head and you thought to yourself, no, it's not there. I mean, the positions, they are always so important. And I think also Carter Woods, he wasn't on the best position when it came down, when uh, Dario Lille put down the hammer at the end. And uh, only two seconds left in between these two. Riley Amos in 20th place for the American. I'm joined here by the winner, Dario Lilio. Dario, congratulations to do the double here at your home race. It must be real specially for you. Yeah, at the moment, it's still uh, still unbelievable. Uh, yeah, I already had goosebumps before the start because, like, to, to race in front of that crowd is special, especially when you can race in the in the Swiss Champs jersey. So, uh, yeah, my expectations were, were high after the short track race, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to enjoy the race. And uh, yeah, it felt good from the from the beginning on. But uh, yeah, it was always quite a, quite a big group. So uh, yeah, I just tried to to see a little bit the lines from the other riders. And uh, yeah, then in the last lap, I knew it will be an all-out sprint to the line. And uh, yeah, um, in the middle of the lap, I found myself with a with a little gap, and then I just knew that I had to to go all out to the to the finish line. Uh, it was quite hard to to like see where the the next rider behind me was because like the the crowd was so so loud so yeah they just pushed me to the line and i i sprinted there and yeah it's an unbelievable feeling to do the the double here in my home venue congratulations thanks a lot thank, thank you, you. there you go dario lilo uh, in-depth debrief after the race there for us but he he, he clearly enjoyed he that one. Yeah, he didn't look exhausted at no. all. He was still was very no. fresh. Uh, but, uh, he had that look of a man that everything went according to plan. I think yeah, men mentally yeah. he feels like he managed that one really yeah, well. Yeah, he was ready for a good weekend and that's what he did. What better can you do? Here are the highlights then. Here's how he did it. Carnage at the start off yeah, the line. Always hard for these riders, such a big group. And it went wrong in the middle of that uh, pack somewhere. Yeah. But not for the first riders. We had a group Flat of six, out. especially with Andreas uh, Vitone. He was one of the best riders actually, and something went wrong with him at the end. We haven't seen it, but with uh, Dario Lilo and uh, Luca Marte here in the beginning of the race. Also, Luca Marte put a lot of effort into this race. Carter Woods from Canada, the Canadian champion, but here he was the French champion. Carter Woods was uh, he was right in amongst it throughout, but never never really towards the front. Didn't impose himself at the front. And whenever it came down to the two of them, he thought maybe he'd kept his powder dry enough. But Dario yeah. Lillo, by contrast, all yeah. these second or third bike, first bike, just right at the front of it, keeping his head on a swivel. Yeah, six riders have been leading uh, for a long time. Jason group with uh, the number, the, the leader's uh, jersey of uh, Oliver Solvoy. Yeah, close yep. contention, the Brazilian, Malacorn. 
This man, though, heartbreak on the final lap for Vitton. Would come in 10th after a day spent at the front. Lilo muscled his way to the front ahead of this uh, descent. It was hard to say who was the strongest. Of course, Dario Lilo, he was uh, leading uh, many times. And he, uh, he showed his strength last Thursday in short track too. So, so he was one of the favorites for sure. And uh, yeah, this should this next fact should give you an idea of the reserves of power and energy these riders have. Dario Lillo, Carter Woods, the only two men to go sub 12 minutes on a lap, and it was done on the last lap. Lillo takes the fastest lap as well because he hasn't done enough winning this weekend. He has to take home the fastest <laughs> lap as well. No extra points for the no fastest extra lap points, times. But <laughs> I bet it's a pretty good feeling. Yeah, yeah. And it came down to a sprint, actually, uh, almost li like a sprint. But, uh, the yeah. card which never came to his wheel, but uh, only two seconds left. But Dario Lilo, he took the win here. He took the, the win. And Lens he, ride. You saw there, he got out of the saddle and he looked over and he realized that, no, I don't have to tap it fully on. Started celebrating. Carter Woods, still a very, very strong performance for the big Canadian national champion. and. One that will certainly fill him full of confidence as we head to Lea Gang next weekend. Here are the standings then. Lilo leads the way by 88 points from Boishy. Carter Woods in third. Oliver Solvoy in fourth, 114 back now. Ahead of Luca Martin, Shelikins, Wiedemann, Hedema, Vitone, and Punchar. Yeah, Oliver Solvoy, he dropped back to the fourth place. But are you Lilo? Leading now, leaders GRC for him. Looking good. Yeah. As I say, like the you don't get any points for that fastest lap record, but it's all this little increments of confidence, isn't it? Yeah, it is. 12, 12 minutes lap time. It's fast. It's fast round here. Yeah, be interesting to see how that stacks up against the elite men's times later yeah, on. Yeah, I think even the, I think the course will be similar. Maybe a little bit faster. Maybe. After so many riders have been have been ridden on it, but well, for the weather watchers that are still with us, it is still overcast. I do think I can see rain out to the other side, just to the west off the track here in Lenzerheide. So whether that makes its way across or not, but you feel that it would take a lot of rain to make a real difference here. It's so dry at the minute. Ah, but the roots get uh, very slippery they do, immediately. Yeah. I was trying to be even with a little bit of rain. I was trying to be positive there, Bart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it makes it even more interesting. Yeah, to have a little definitely. Bit of rain. Yeah, for us, for us, for in us, the booth. For not us. for the racers, but for some us of the booth. riders, they like it. They, they like it a bit more, more technical. They do. More. They do. Same as in uh, all the uh, all the formats, the downhill especially, you've got that. Oh, you have some rainy. You've there. got that group there. You, you've got a group of three or four riders that you know love it when it gets wet and just go even harder. Yeah, I think for the women it's more difficult, but for the men they don't have any problems most of the time. Yep, getting the bike to grip over some routes that are covered in water, not that easy. So the photographers lining up for the podium. And more and more fans coming in. You can see this place is really starting to busy up now. Look at the size of the VIP. Too. Carter, second here in Lenzerheide. It was a very tough end for the race. Just take us through it. How did it go for you? Yeah, no, I started with a steady start and um, yeah, they were they were hitting it pretty hard at the top of all the climbs, and I was just keeping it steady, staying at the back of the group. Um, yeah, no, saving energy. Saving energy for, for for what point? Whatever, you never know. It's a game of chess, and you don't don't know when someone's going to attack, so just staying relaxed, staying calm, and being ready for when uh, last lap. And what do you think that Dario had? What do you think that, that, that tiny bit on you that meant that he took the lead? What, what could you have done, maybe, in retrospect? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's super strong right now. This track is, it's why it's one of my favorites. It's so technical. Your brain has to be on at all times. Um, and yeah, one one wrong pedal stroke, you pedal hits a root and there's a few seconds. So yeah, I was just trying to stay ready. And I surged once he got away a little bit, but it was so tight to the finish. Thank you very much. Thank you. There we are, Carter Woods. 
Yeah. Enjoyed his day out by the sound of it. Tight it was at the end. Two seconds. Second place for Carter Woods. Great performance. One of the future stars, definitely, isn't he? He is. <laughs> Well, we can hear from the third place man today. Dan, but I wasn't, didn't get any, any information. Did you speak to me then? Oh, OK. Adrian, second here today, and of course... Uh, oh. Third. Sorry. <laughs> nice, all right. No, I'm going to take second Adrian, second in short track on Friday and third here in cross country. A great result of this weekend. Yeah, I mean, at the minute I'm a bit disappointed, but for sure, I've seen a few hours, I would be pretty pleased. It's my first ever World Cup in the podium World Cup in the cross country. I did everything I could, rode as smart as I could and tried it in the last lap, made the hardest race as hard as I could, but I guess I didn't believe as much as I should have in the last lap. And so if it took me in a weird place, in a stupid place, I should have closed the gap and yeah, then it was race over. But for sure it's a really good weekend. I'm really happy with the step I've made this year, but for sure I want to win and I race to win. So for sure one day, I hope it's going to happen. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I hope, I hope it helps for my future and it's a step forward, but maybe one day I will be able to fight for the win. I'm sure you will. Thank you very much. Thank you. There we go then, Adrian Boishy. Races with his heart on his sleeve, that lad. Plenty more races to come. Plenty more opportunities to walk away with a big one. Dario Lillo and Carter Woods. Look like they've just been out on one of Bart's coffee rides. Pretty chilled out. There is Washi. You can see the anguish, you can see the effort that went into that. What could have been? Well, the good news for them is that they don't have long to wait before there's a chance to go racing again. We head to Lee again for one of the busiest weekends of mountain bike racing so far this season. Boishy then onto the podium. Third place today. He's just told us it wasn't what he was hopeful for, but it's points in the bank. And it's a superb performance under his wages. Carter Woods. Well, he maybe just left it slightly too late to really challenge for the win today, but rode incredibly cleverly. And get ready for one of the biggest smiles in Switzerland today. That sounds good to Dario Lillo's ears. Dario Lillo takes to the top step for Scott Davos MTB project at home in Switzerland at the second UCI mountain bike cross country Olympic under 23 men's race of the year. Dario Lillo takes the win. And he does the double at home in Switzerland, having walked away with the Short Track World Cup win earlier on the weekend. <laughs> Dario Lillo, first, second, third, back and forth all day today. Rode superbly from the front. And has earned 
every drop of that champagne. Nearly takes himself out off the podium. These three riders will lock horns together again on Friday evening coming. From Leo Gang in Austria. Lilo can stay where he is because we're about to get some confirmation on those standings. And he's about to get himself a fresh leader's jersey. Straight into it as well, wasting no time. Dario Lilo leads the way in the overall and he's done it at home. The best place possible, look at what that means to him. There is the fastest bike of the day, that's Scott Spark. We'll be seeing a few more of those going bar to bar very shortly in the elite race. We start with the women's. But here is confirmation of the standings. Lilo leads the way by 88 points now from Boishi. Carter Woods, Solvoy. You have to say the big loser today as he drops down to fourth in the overall, but plenty of racing left this season. Luca Martin, Tom Schellikens, Viedman, Hudema, Vitone, and Punchar. You have to feel for Vitone. Did everything right today up until the last quarter of the last lap. Well, Lenzo Haida always delivers, and you don't have to wait long before we go racing again with the elites. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.